Welcome everyone to another video on Brand Device. My name is Bharat and in this video I want to speak to you about what makes more sense, uh, stocks or real estate. Now, of course, for this, I don't have the time to <laughs> write down a script for this. So what I did was I went to Notion and I said, okay, like tell me some, the, some of the differences between stocks and real estate. And I'm going to show you the table because I found the table very interesting. And then I'm going to give you what exactly I did because how we act in reality is very different than whatever theories which are available. So I want to start with the comparison first so that you can get a little bit of idea. So it says criteria, you have stocks and real estate, accessibility, easy to buy and sell through an online bro brokerage account, uh, requires significant amount of money and finding the right property. Then it says so critical and so important you wouldn't understand it. So here's the thing, uh, think about somebody who is just starting out earning their first money or who is starting in a part-time job whatever it is so much easier for you to open a free online depot i have it scalable capital i've been really happy so far it's been over it's been over two years already it is absolutely crazy how time flies but um, i've been super happy with them so far and any kind of like customer support things i needed they were always there so customer support is also pretty nice so if you want to open a depot that can be done very easily and if you want to open with scalable capital you will find the link for that in the description below there are many others out there too but of course the fees and stuff is then a little bit higher i used to have with a few of them in the end i actually found scalable to be the best real estate now somebody who is just starting out in a part-time job for them it's so much easier to save some money on the side and like you know start investing in stocks or etfs than it is to start saving and save for the down payment of a house now let's run some numbers here. If you're starting out and it's a part-time job and maybe you're able to save like 100, 200 euros a month. 200 euros a month is 2,400 euros a year. And you would have to then save up to for at least 10 years for you to have 24,000 euros so that you're able to afford something which is around 240,000 euros. And even then, you would need to have enough money to cover the rest of the costs which occur in Germany. So around 10% of the costs are the costs for the real estate agent, the notary, like uh, multiple other things which I'll be discussing in another video. All of these things have to be covered by you in cash most of the times. So till the time somebody who is earning a lot less money will be able to put the money aside and then afterwards buy a real estate, that becomes a lot more difficult, especially during these times where the inflation is so, so much higher. I'm going to show you a uh, calculation in another video so there are two more videos pending which is about the expatriation tax and the video about the loans like how exactly it works you would see that like my bank told me that if i'm going to take a loan for 150,000 euros for one time i would have to pay it back in 10 years and i can even pay it back earlier but i would still have to pay the 70,000 euros of interest rate which would accumulate over these 10 years no matter when i finish it so I take a loan for 150,000 euros, but I am paying back 220,000 euros, which is ridiculous. And this is also exactly the reason why I told you guys that none of the real estate we bought, we didn't buy it over loan. And if you feel comfortable with the feeling of having a loan of like, you know, being accountable to somebody else, like to answer to somebody else, if you are comfortable with that feeling, of course, you can go for it. I just do not feel comfortable with that. I know people who feel very comfortable with that. And of course, we have heard stories over and over again of people taking hundreds of loans, buying hundreds of properties and then saying, okay, like, you know, per property, I only have a cash flow of actually just eight euros per month or 10 euros per month. To me, it does not make any kind of sense. I don't want to put myself in a situation where something can go wrong and I can go bankrupt. My companies can go bankrupt, things like that. I don't want that to happen at all. That's why for me, it is a lot more important that I'm like taking a little bit safer and like leaving some money in the bank account so that if something goes wrong, I have enough funds available to fix that, then just like playing at crazy risks, whatever, I don't want that. Till the time you have this money saved up, I mean, it is ridiculous, but in the same 10 years, the money can double for you when you're like putting that money inside in ETFs and stuff. And you can still sell that and then afterwards have more money when you're planning to actually buy a house afterwards. So this is very important that you know which stage you're in. If you're in your starting stages of investment, right? For example, you're just like watching my videos right now, watching other investment videos right now for the first time it's the first few months of your life right now. And you see, okay, like you have not been saving a lot of money and you should start saving some money. And then you start saving like 100, 200, 500 euros per month. It still makes sense to invest in stocks because or ETFs because if you start saving money aside for 
a house till the time you would be putting that money aside for a down payment that would take a lot of time but if you're like 100% sure that you can keep on like growing your income and you can keep on saving more money then it would start making sense that okay i'm going to cap my investments in ets and stocks only to 300 euros per month the rest of the money i'm going to start putting aside for the house or the apartment that, that i want to buy that is a much better way of handling things than saying okay like i'm just going to buy a real estate because i believe in real estate only i don't believe in stocks or ets because both of them have their positives and negatives which we go ahead then in this video now next comes liquidity stocks are of course highly liquid and you can sell them anytime you want and you have your money that's what liquidity means that you can sell something right away and you're able to get the money that you're able to use but real estate it is a lot less liquid and it takes a lot of time sometimes to sell something if you want to, to sell your house till the time find somebody who actually finds your house nice who actually likes your interiors and stuff that has to be one of the sheep in the thousands of herd which is like actually out there so till the time you find that buyer of course it takes time so that's why real estate is a lot less liquid and if you are in situations where you need um, fast cash uh, stocks make a lot more sense that's why even right now i have around 20 percent of my net worth put aside in stocks i don't know if it's 20 percent or if it's lower now because we have bought uh, some properties so but still we have a decent amount of money put inside in stocks and i'm comfortable with that right now i don't want to put that put more of that aside in this moment because um i want to focus a little bit more on real estate and see how that develops because again this is also a learning experience for me i'm never going to be that yoda that guru who knows everything i just know just like you guys are learning i'm learning and i'm just here to share my experience with you because i've simply seen more things i've done more things and i'm in a different situation in my life right now where i'm able to afford to take some more risks and talk about them here on this channel now talk about the potential returns if you're talking about stocks of course there are chances of higher returns in a shorter period of time but that almost never happens with real estate there are some tricks we learned where you're able to kind of like double your money in real estate and within a year or two but that is um yeah that is not really the norm like you're not able to do it like consistently in real estate as much as you might be able to do it with stocks then afterwards the risk you actually have a lot higher risk with the stocks because you just never know if like things drop to zero because nobody can tell me that like things cannot drop to zero things can all the time it can like become some ridiculous amount and then you're like okay like things are gone i don't have anything in hand and the reason we wanted to then go towards real estate was because with all of this banking crisis and stuff like we don't want to have a crazy amount of money only in stocks because okay if the stocks go down then we have some real estate if real estate goes down then we have some stocks this is the kind of situation you want to be in like you don't want to be just 100 percent in one single place only that is not really helpful for you uh, real estate lower risk and more or less stable market unless there are also some situations so for example don't let anybody tell you that real estate only goes up in price real estate can also really screw up um, for example, if there's some kind of like, you know, let's say a uh, uh, refugee shelter like uh, got built all of a sudden and maybe like there are situations where like people don't want to start living in the area because again, like you can write whatever comments you want about the refugee shelter thing, but there is a general feeling of uh, feeling more unsafe when there's some kind of like these shelters built right next to your place. I remember in Denmark, the house that we had like previously, there used to be a homeless shelter like right behind it. And like because of that, the price of the property dropped massively. And when we bought the property, it was actually super cheap. Like we just got it for 43,000 euros. But of course, it was in a very bad condition. So we had to put around like 180,000 euros or something inside. But like that was the story. Like, you know, you, you can have these kind of situations or, for example, let's say uh, there's some like other building in the front, which is in a horrible condition, which brings down the value of the entire surroundings. Or maybe there's some kind of like, you know, big accident happened, some building fell down or there's some kind of like, you know, sewer plant which started or a cow stable, which is like making crazy smell, things like that. All of the things which are going to reduce your willingness to stay in one single area is going to be something which is going to throw down the value of your real estate. So this is also something you have to be aware of. And it's not that real estate always go up in value, but this is more or less the trend. Like this is generally the case that real estate goes up in value, but stocks can go crazy up or crazy down in a very short amount of time. Then let's take a look at the maintenance 
of course you have no maintenance in stock and this is also why i loved it so much i've told you like i think almost always previously that the reason i don't want to go into real estate and the reason i want to like stay in stocks is because i like the freedom of just being anywhere i want without having the worry of something going wrong in the house something screwing up or some i don't know tap not working something broken stuff like that i have to call people it has to get fixed it has all of the sudden like extra cost for me and this is the reason i really really loved stocks then real estate because it always requires maintenance then diversification now of course with stocks you're able to diversify in many countries and many companies just from your online brokerage account so for example scalable capital but with real said that's not really an option now i know that some of the people were actually telling me previously that like why do you have all of your properties in one single place uh that is in bucharest in romania and that is like um, a lot of like it is a lot of risk just like you know or mainly on the basis of location itself because right next to ukraine things like that and like you know if the war starts so hundred other things if the war starts i think like my real estate would be the least of our worries i think it would be a lot more things which are going to be the immediate problems for many people so yeah okay like you know what you can do about it but if you think about it at the same time there must be people people in ukraine who would have their real estate who must have bought like many real estate right now and all of a sudden like war starts and like what is the real estate worth and who is going to buy real estate in ukraine right now maybe there's some very smart guy out there who starts buying things in ukraine at this moment when everything is dirt cheap could be very interesting um but otherwise like you know more or less the property values uh, you would be selling most of them in a loss if you haven't already have owned them for a very long time but if you take a look at anybody like you know i understand that you guys uh, are giving me this feedback i'm very happy about it um like we just have one house in denmark rest of the properties in romania but also like not all of them in bucharest one is in some uh, to the border of hungary other are in uh, bucharest so it is very unlikely anyways for people to have properties in many different countries unless you are at a completely different level of earning we are not there yet so we are there that we are able to buy a few properties but it is not the stage where i'm able to start companies in different kind of countries and i'm able to buy properties over those companies i do not want to take that kind of headache right now because in theory it might sound very nice that okay like you are having like so much diversification you have properties everywhere things like that but in reality every single company has to have a lawyer has to have a accountant which means you have running costs then every single country you need to have electricity connections electricity contracts you need to have uh some kind of like local regulations about the waste management things like that all of that has to be managed and if you're just having one property in one single country and you have to hire a property manager for that like it's it's very very difficult for you to diversify in many other countries without the possibility of getting scammed massively in those countries in romania the property purchases that we had we did not have a crazy good experience we actually had experience like where we were almost scammed in one and and two others we ended up paying more and the rest of the three went uh, perfectly fine so there are these kind of things which happen in every single country but would that have happened in germany i don't think so like in germany i still believe that people are like that honest that like you generally have exactly the things that you get but also at the same time i was like watching a video recently about somebody who bought a 911 a Porsche 911 and it was a older version and unfortunately the Porsche center sold them as something completely different than what they got so now also like stories like that but in general like my belief is still that in germany i've had much better experiences with these things than in romania where if you see the wrong people if you meet the wrong people in romania you can have very very bad experience and this is the reason i say if you want to start a company in romania or whatever it makes a lot more sense to already go via myromaniancompany.com because i'm giving you access to my own accountant who is running my companies since the last 2 years and i have really positive experience with her so far because otherwise i wouldn't be recommending it to you because building a name takes a lot of time and if i want to make a quick buck and like my name gets ruined in the process that makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever it's my own accountant and you can also open your company in romania with her at very affordable prices so if you want to like talk more about it or something i will leave the link for that in the description so that you can contact my accountant and you can speak to her and discuss about whatever kind of questions you have because 
at least like with these people i know that i have very good experience there are like people with whom i don't have good experience in romania but with our accountant i have absolutely no problems whatsoever and this is also the reason we are staying in romania for so long because we have very very less work to do and afterwards appreciation stocks can appreciate or depreciate very very quickly whereas that is not the case in real estate except the cases i told you about before that is some kind of like you know willingness to live in that place goes down so then the property of your real estate will also go down so these are the few things i wanted to speak to you about about real estate versus stocks like i said there are stages in your life where you would be better off while you're investing in stocks and there are stages in your life where you'll be better off while you're investing in real estate and what kind of stage you're at for that you have to do some kind of calculations you have to see how much money you're making how much money you're saving and how much money you're able to increase afterwards these are all very important parameters that you have to sit down and decide so that you're able to make some kind of plan for it right anyways if you want to speak to me you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation in the link given below this video also gave you insights on my idea that is how i was really focused on stocks in the first few years because of course the money that i was saving is not so much for me to like able to buy a house right away or something or be comfortable about it like it also takes some time for you to feel like okay like you know this is the time now i can like go towards real estate till the time that comes till the time you're not making so much money it makes still a lot more sense to invest in stocks when you're making a lot more money real estate is a better and safer store of value for you as long as you're picking a good location that's it so with real estate there's very little chance that you can do something wrong Whereas with stocks, there are chances you can do something wrong and there are chances it can go to complete like ridiculous uh, losses. That is not generally the case with real estate. These are my two cents. If you have any kind of questions, suggestions whatsoever, leave them in the comments. I will see you in the next video. Bye.